Oh, it was very interesting to see that there's, of course, this uh, one big topic is uh, the old versus the new life, no? mm. the lifestyle, how to, which is often in um, countries that have a big change, like India is going through a big change in the last 20 years, I guess. Right. So um, this is a big topic for a lot of people. And on the other hand, you have this modern life concerning also relationships. How do I live a relationship, man, woman? So that was really something that occurred in many films. Mm. And uh, yeah, I think the quality was quite high. It was all fictional. Mm. So I wondered a little uh, about the interest of documentary work or animation, but perhaps this is also a choice by the festival. Mm. And, um, and a matter of how many people working here because the, watching also documentaries is another many films entering, so mm. it might be very difficult. Right. Um, yeah, and I mean, like in Berlin this year, we also had the, the latest film of Ahmed Dotta, right. which I think he's like the most well-known right. short filmmaker or artist filmmaker in India, I guess. Right. No? And, and more uh, well-known outside of India, sadly. Yeah, sadly, because I think he's really working with what you have, you know. On the one hand, all the tradition and the mythology right. and all the colors right. and having really a very own approach on how to use it, how to tell a story and he is going more and deeper and deeper into mythology, I think, right. Right. which is interesting for us also in Germany, like to see like what is, what are stories that are, that matter here. Mm -hmm. I mean, Dota is not so well, so often screened in India because you don't have so many showcases. Right. I, I guess this is one point. I guess mm. people working in the avant-garde and experimental film scene also in India know him very well, mm. which is where he belongs to somehow. Also, right, now he's right. in, he's connected to the art world and A so lot, yeah. yeah. So I guess people from there know him. Mm. And uh, I mean, it would be interesting, for example, to have here next year like like a retrospective on his work, for example. Then you close the gap, no? Right. Somehow. Because on the other hand, uh, these boys' films, I like to call them boys' films, no? like the action film, mm. and the policeman film, and the gun film, these are topics that you can find in whichever nationality, right. it doesn't matter. It's something like, uh huh, to one certain point in your career you have to make this, uh, you really want to talk about guns, and, and it's very difficult to make a really good gun good film. One, yeah because you feel immediately it's a cliché. Right. You know? So there are several clichés you can tap in. One is the gun, the other one, yeah, I mean, it's this way of how to look at a woman, not seeing her, but talking about her, or, you know, mm. like putting her in a certain way that, every, that you watch it and you know she's not true. Real. She's yeah, an she's idea of right. someone. Yeah. Yeah. So on the other hand, there were, for example, in this program, there were some films where I thought, oh, yeah, here someone is really touching it and, and touching and bringing it to the ground and like facing it and mm. and really want to talk to the other one if it's a man or a woman doesn't matter but like like go in, into a relationship and then it becomes interesting no? mm, mm. so that happens so that I think yeah there are some people out here mm. uh, tell me a bit about uh, the uh, Berlin Alley and, and the program that you curate what is it that you look for in uh, uh, the films that you you know select. Yeah, we look in Berlin. What we want to screen and what we want to expose are films that go beyond any borders, that dare something, that are not afraid of anything, that work without second level. You know, like without they cross something and then they might fall, hmm. but they don't actually because they just keep on walking. So that are these. I don't know how to describe it, but this is one, um, yeah, it's like artist movies on the one hand, but movies that you see that it's uh, certain handwriting, which later become so-called style of the hmm. filmmaker. Hmm. If you watch the first films of Francois Ozone, you see there's the handwriting. If you see the first films of Jim Jarmusch, you know there's someone. So that's what we are actually looking for. Hmm. It's interesting that you mentioned that because the films uh, that you have got here with you, uh, uh, most of which I saw, um, they are not the typical narrative-driven, you know, f fiction kind of 
short films uh, they are very very uh, very much individual projects if i may put it uh, like that i mean and in fact the uh, artist is as much you know and sometimes actually it's very very uh, breaking the fourth wall so to say the palestinian film where you know you can hear them shooting uh, talking about the shooting the film um, the film uh, which was shown yesterday which was the planet uh, planet sigma planet sigma which was again almost an art you know it's so hard what she's yeah. saying um, they are all dead actually these animals what are you saying they are all dead it's incredible yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were all in her refrigerator and then her dad comes by one day and he was like she is working i mean it takes time to do what she is doing and then her dad comes and they're like and was open the fridge and then all these animals fell out <laughs> Dead. And he was shocked. He was like, "I want you to marry." <laughs> <laughs> like this, you never get a husband. Well, she got a super husband, and she has just got a child. So, so uh, again, the uh, last film with the uh, flag one is again where the filmmaker is, you know, almost visible. It, you know, not there. Um, so there, there is a lot of the filmmaker in the film, which is uh, maybe a stupid thing to say because that's true for every film. But you know, in these films, in, in a very obvious manner. you know that this person you know is doing something very very distinctive uh, is is that something that you are consciously looking for yes absolutely you're looking for the artist i mean you can call him filmmaker or artist doesn't matter it's someone who's really looking for someone trying to understand a certain thing hmm. it's like like really dealing with the language of cinema hmm. and and trying to figure out something hmm. so um because you said like yeah the typical narrative short film and i wonder why short films typically narrate mm. has to be a fictional film you know that's something i really don't understand but often it's like this yes but why and then if you really start like ram also when he yesterday gave his uh, small speech and then he showed his film the short film i don't have you seen yeah. so this is kind of films i'm looking for mm. you see immediately there's someone there's someone someone who's thinking about it in a different way mm. because then of course but this is only for berlin mm. there are other festivals that are more interested in typical mm. narrated storytelling mm. which i got easily bored mm. because i've seen it so many times and i think like like i said like if you don't touch the ground really touch the ground with mm. the figures with the plot mm. then it's something that is not touching me at all mm. and in the end it's about getting touched isn't it mm. again in terms of uh, setting uh, the theme or you know uh, is is there a uh, a different theme every year is is there something new you are looking for There's, every year no it's i'm i'm waiting i'm looking what's coming but then of course like every i mean we everything changes every mm. whole time mm. so of course there are changes and you there are different topics in the air people have and want to speak about different things i think now really i'm awaiting something more about the all the refugee people mm. i mean they are on for four years now with the war in syria mm. so i think there must be there will be more films mm-hmm. in in terms of uh so we've spoken about the content obviously not much to you know you can't really separate content from the form uh, in the kind of films that you're talking about they're you know, obviously very strongly wedded together no they have to go together, together that's right, basically right, what they have to do right. if they don't match then you have it a problem it falls apart yeah mm, so i was asking if uh, you've seen certain trends in recent times to the short films that have come to you um which are very apparent in terms of you know have have there been changes in uh, the kind of stories that have are been told and also in the way they are been told in the last uh, few years i mean the level is super high the the quality the so called quality the technical level is super high because it's possible mm. easily possible in post production mm. and so on something that 15 years ago it was really it wasn't makeable mm. for without money or with mm. little money and today with the same money you can create a, another look mm. so it looks different mm. so on the other hand so we get highly quali- high quality films on the one hand and then people shooting on 16 on 35 trying to get this look mm. back which promises kind of different story no mm. more touchy more uh yeah more connected so this is 
are the two poles, I would say, mm. concerning the form. And I mean, you should really watch this dissonance thing in terms of, I can write you down, he did this film, Centrifuge Brain Project, it's on... Centrifuge YouTube. Brain Project, okay. It's online, mm. it got more than a million clicks, and uh, it's incredible, and there he already starts to combine 3D and live action, and you don't see it in the beginning, you simply don't see it, and it's, it's just a great match of what is possible, and mm. still uh, having the story in mm. your back. Huh? Mm -hmm. Great story, funny story. Centrifuge brain project. Yes. I think it's a great eye-opener for a lot of young filmmakers to see yes. these kind of films because you you know grow up and you're watching a certain kind of cinema maybe you you know and and you see what is popular right you kind of it comes down to you but you don't get to see these kind of films which are you know doing things out there like you know at the edges and that opens your eyes up a lot to what is possible like hey this is also something that you know somebody's done and you know that's what I mean uh, yeah go for the borders yeah and you well of course you're right I mean it's difficult to see the films if they are not online and I yeah. really uh, appreciate that they don't put them online because uh, yeah it takes also time for the circuit with the festivals and so on and so on so it would right. be a lost if they right. put them immediately online and even if you don't get curated somehow right. or, or lead it then you don't find them right and right. it doesn't make sense to put them online only just like this, you know. How do you see uh, your role as a curator? Yeah, my role as a curator is that I'm quite a powerful person, of course. In Like a museum director or someone, you are in the position to expose uh, an artist to an audience and to put possible bias and to something that might may or not, may not extend his career. Hmm. So, of course, it's uh, important to to be sure of what one is doing mm. and why one what one is doing what he or she is doing. No? Mm. So I'm aware of that pretty much. Mm. I'm aware of my audience, of course, as, but I never know exactly who is sitting there, but mm. still I try to get in dialogue and that's what we actually do in Berlin because we have a lot of Q&As, we have artist talks, long artist talks and um, so there is a lot of interchange with the audience and they stay and they want to know as you wanted to know here so mm. I think uh, I always believe that people and mankind want to want to go further mm. want to understand more mm. so as long as you accompany someone in this process it's mm. fine mm. and then there might be a film which you really don't like, but it's not so much about liking or not liking, or which you don't understand, but then all you close your eyes, which is fine in short film role because it's 15 mm. minutes of thing, mm. and you relax a little, or you just simply stand that there's something that you don't like, and then you can ask yourself why you don't stand it, or you know, like go into a dialogue with yourself because it's easy to stick to films mm. that you like. That's right, not the problem. Right. The interesting moment is when it comes to films like Hosanna, right. where you say, Hey, I can't stand it, so why not? What's your problem? What's your fucking problem? You see all day long films that people get shot and everyone is applauding and what a great action film. Hey, and now you get, you know, what is, where is the tricky moment right. that you can't stand it? Right. And what is the sensitive moment of the film, mm. you know? Yeah. And then it becomes really interesting and then you take something out of it. Mm. So that's uh, part of the process of creating programs like this in cinema, no? Like mm. to, to, f to really, give certain lines, three <laughs> little lines, and uh, let people follow these lines or find their own line. Right. Uh, give them some hints, some topics, something that matter throughout the years. You ask for the tendencies, mm. but they mm. change, but still there are topics people want to talk about and there is certain necessity for something. And then of course my role is also like, or to, to help to come these topics come out or say okay it's not interesting for us or so because the Berlinale is always called a, it's a political festival what does it mean to be political no? mm. and for me it means like to provide room for discussion mm. with what we show mm. and I mean if you think about the films there is you can talk about every film and there's a lot to talk about to think yeah. about yeah it's almost a pity to have five in a row yeah you know, because then you, oh, oh. you, after each film, you could make a break and think about it and talk about it. And 
for a long time. Yeah, for a long time. So that's basically what I try to do, no? Mm, mm, mm. Uh, any words of advice for young filmmakers? I oh. mean, obviously you are looking for artists, like you're saying, which, which you know, not so it's you know automatically filtering out a lot of people. But in terms of advice uh, to young filmmakers uh, who who are maybe starting out, who've made a few short films, who have a voice of their own. No, I mean, in terms of uh, how to go about it, what do you think? Uh, uh, would there be a few words of advice from from the festival curator of Berlinale? I said, my mother. I'm not so good in advising. <laughs> I'm better in making. Ah, okay. <laughs> uh, no, I'm making. I mean, keep on making. I, I think the most important process, also during filmmaking or during writing or during, I mean, whatever artistic. Uh, process you do you you know it then it's also with writing you feel when you're true and you don't you you know when you are fudging yeah you know it so that's basically stick to the rules I mean stick to yourself that's most important that's amazing advice yeah isn't Sorry, it I mean you are writing and yeah, you know yeah, when yeah. you're all oh, yeah, it's easier to write like, like this, this and, right. oh, no come back to where it really hurts no right. hurts in in whatever sense right it may hurt in a good sense because then you know oh, yeah, you know that kind of feeling fine yeah that's true uh, that's it thanks thanks so much uh, there's obviously a lot to talk about but I guess uh, we've got to end it somewhere so wonderful talk thank you thank you very much